back to Holtzfeller Woodworking. My name is Alan, and in this episode, we're gonna press on with the other half of the mudroom. On this side, we're going to build a much needed bench for my kids with Schubladen, uh, drawers for shoes underneath. We're gonna build some lockers all the way up to hopefully take care of some of their thousands of jackets that they have, some, with some storage for toques and mittens, the whole deal. So I've never built one of these before, so the plan is uh, map it out with some tape. Now I didn't have any of that fancy blue tape you see on TV, I just had duct tape, and that's gonna work just fine. So I wanna figure out how high we want it. It's gonna be the box will go up to about here. We're gonna have a slab on top for the bench. So that's gonna end up being about this height, which seems about right. It's gonna come out about 50 centimeters. We're doing metric. And that's gonna be the, the base there with a slight overhang. So it'll end up being right about here. We're gonna have three drawers. Uh, I'm making this out of birch plywood. So hopefully that means we're gonna get a nice solid uh, edge with no gaps, which means I can probably avoid building a face frame on this uh, project, which is kind of exciting. I wanna keep things very, very simple. So about to go ahead, I do have to deal with this, which I just found out is an access for the drain for the kitchen sink upstairs. So I have to be aware of that. We've never used it in the time we've lived here. Hopefully we never will, but if we ever need access to it, I'm gonna to have to take that into account. If it does come up, I wanna make it so that the bench can easily be pulled out and we can get at it. In order to better illustrate, hopefully, how I'm gonna make this bench, I put together a little mock-up version. Now, ultimately, we're really just building a plywood box for the carcass, but plywood is very expensive, so let's try to save some where we can. For example, we don't need a five solid sides. What we do need is a solid bottom made of plywood and two solid sides. Now the sides will go all the way down so we don't see any end grain and I don't want any screw holes in there so I'm gonna use pocket holes on the bottom which we'll never see. The factory edge on your plywood is going to be nice and straight but it's likely going to be pretty banged up. Use that edge against the fence to trim the opposite edge so it's clean and straight. Then set the fence to width, in this case 50 centimeters. Then flip the piece around so your new edge is against the fence and cut to size. Now when it comes to the back and the top, I'm going to cut a couple of plywood stretchers, four to be exact, uh, or nailers, I've heard them be called both. We're gonna put two across the back. Not only will it provide stability for the unit, it will allow me to screw through and mount this unit to the wall. As for the top, I'm gonna to have two more stretchers going across here, which will, again, keep it very stable. And we will never see that gap because we're going to build a solid wood top that will cover it up. And when viewed from the front, the face frame will look uniform. When it comes to ripping the pieces for the four stretchers, the exact size isn't important, as long as they are wide enough to be sturdy. I'll divide this piece up into four equal widths. Here we have the bottom of the bench. It's going to be 150 centimeters wide, so we're going to clean up one side and then cut the other one to length. But the bottom won't actually be 150 centimeters. It fits between the two sides, so it will be 150 minus 36 millimeters. Much like the laundry room cabinet, I don't want this one sitting on the floor either. There's gonna be mud and water on the floor, and I'd like to minimize damage. So that's why we're gonna use these little guys with the adjustable feet. The front of the cabinet will sit on top of those, so we need to factor in that height when we work out our total height. And of course, I'll build a disposable skirt to cover it all up. I need these legs to be shorter than the shortest version available, so out comes the angle grinder. It doesn't matter if they're all perfect, the wind-in feet will compensate for any height difference. 
The bottom is too wide to cut on the miter saw, and I don't have a big enough sled for the table saw, so the trusty old track saw and a bunch of measuring is the way to go. This edge is just being cleaned up, so we want to remove as little as possible. I'll square up a 90 and trim it off. And here, Goodwill Hunting calculates the exact length of our bottom piece. I like to measure multiple times and then check for square. We need to complete the same process with both of our sides, but the stretchers are narrow enough to be cut on the miter saw. To calculate the height of our sides, we subtract the thickness of our solid wood top, about 25 to 30 millimeters, and the height of the adjustable legs. I'm actually going to finish these on the table saw, but I like to break them down first to make them a little bit more manageable. If you're careful, you can get a straight reference edge for both pieces with one cut. The stretchers will all be attached with pocket holes as well. I find it much easier to give all the flat sides a light sanding before assembly. It's always nice to have a great assistant when putting together large projects using pocket holes. Once the stretchers are in place, I screw them down from the top and the bottom for a little added strength. After that, I'm going to add two plywood dividers, which will give us additional support and give us room for three drawers. Now, here's where I made a mistake. I built the entire box first and then cut these to size and installed them. If I had to do this again, I would cut them at the very beginning and build this as one solid unit. Once I have the dividers cut to size, I install them using a couple of spacers to make sure that everything is equidistant. I give the face a pass with the sander and then knock down any sharp edges by hand. Birch plywood is fantastic, but there are still the occasional voids that need filling with the good old red putty. Got a couple coats of paint on this, using a foam roller, of course. The no face frame experiment with the birch plywood is okay. It actually looks fine for the mudroom bench. It's gonna be covered up most of the time by the drawer fronts. Uh, but if this was a finished project for up in, say, the living room it's, or the kitchen, I think I would do something different. Maybe do a much better job of sealing it or actually go with, with the face frame. Next up, we have to install the feet so we can get this installed on the wall. But once we do that, the entire project's gonna be off kilter a little bit because the back is gonna be held on the wall by a cleat. So meanwhile, I need to install the drawer slides, which I would rather do up on the bench here. Easier to get at. So I'm gonna do those first. We're gonna flip this over, install the feet, and the little magnetic skirt holder. I'm using the exact same slides as I used in the laundry room project, so I know how far back from the front to set them. Not having a face frame makes mounting these slides a breeze. Before we install the legs, we need to add a little plywood cleat that will let us mount our removable skirt. 
I'm going to glue a couple of magnets into them and some metal plates on the skirt. And that's going to hold everything in place. I don't want the skirt to be flush with the face because if it's not perfectly straight the entire length, you're going to notice it. Nor do I want to set it too far back so that it looks silly. So we're going to set it just back from the edge. And to install the wall cleat, I used the same level trick from the previous project. Okay, I've got the cleat screwed onto the wall, ready to install the carcass. Uh, I painted around the edge, either side. I didn't have time to paint the entire wall, but I did want to paint the very edges where the bench is going to sit to avoid masking it off later when I have to paint the whole wall. So next step, we're going to slide this over and screw it right to the wall. The wall cleat is dialed in, so I simply adjust the feet until the whole thing is level. With the carcass in place, I drill through the back stretchers, making sure I go all the way to the wall. I can use those marks to drill for the anchors. Make a couple of lines on the wall and the bench, so you can easily line it up later. Remove the bench and drill for the anchors. The bench goes back in place and screwed to the wall. It's time to build some drawers. Now, I have the exact right amount of 15 mil plywood left over if I'm creative and careful. So I draw a map. Okay, we've got all the plywood broken down, cut to size. I even have all the dado slash rabbits. I think it's a dado cut in to accept the bottom of the drawers. Everything is sanded. We have pocket holes drilled. Time to assemble some drawer boxes. Now this process is identical to the drawers I built for the laundry side. So I'm not going to waste your time showing you again. If you want to see that, click back on the other video. So for now, we're going to skip ahead. Let's go. While the stain on the boxes is drying, I'm going to get to work building the drawer fronts. Now, normally you'd get all fancy with the five-piece panel doors, the tongues and the grooves and the what have you. But when it came time to build a filler piece for the laundry room, I needed a simple panel, which all I did was take a rough cut piece of scrap MDF and glued some five mil on the front and it worked out pretty well. I can't really tell the difference. So what's preventing me from doing that with these? These drawer fronts that my kids are going to treat like a rental car. Pride, really. Uh, snobbery. So what I'm gonna do is I picked up some 12 mil MDF that I'm gonna cut into just simple panels to cover the hole. I have some five mil MDF that I'm going to cut into slats and just glue the uh, rails and styles directly on and once it's painted I don't think anyone's going to tell the difference. First thing is to cut all the panels to size with the appropriate reveal between drawers. Then I cut the five millimeter MDF, is it HDF? Into five centimeter wide strips to match the laundry room cabinets. Cut the styles to length, glue and clamp in place. Once those are dry, I cut the rails to length by sneaking up on the cut to ensure a tight fit. With all the glue dry, a quick sanding to get them ready for paint. While the paint is drying, I pop the skirt into place using the magnets. I was originally going to mount the drawer poles in the center of the face, but that would put them too low. So I'm going to move them up top. I cut a piece of scrap to use as a spacer to make sure all three are identical. It will be infinitely easier to mount the drawer fronts before we get the top piece into place. Starting with the center panel, I clamp them and then attach them with screws from the inside through the pre-drilled holes. And we have a mudroom bench with drawers. Minus the bench part, of course, but that comes next. Lucky for me, Santa Claus, Weihnachtsmann here in Deutschland, 
brought me a thickness planer this year. So when the sawmill opens up after the break, we're gonna head down there, pick out some nice rough saw and oak and get to building a nice bench top. That's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two of the Mudroom Bench. Mm -hmm.